May 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Samuel chapters 19 and 20 from the Old Testament. Then Saul told his son Jonathan and all his servants to kill David. But Saul's son Jonathan liked David very much. So Jonathan told David, My father Saul is trying to kill you, so be careful tomorrow morning. Find a hiding place and stay in seclusion. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are. I will speak about you to my father. When I find out what the problem is, I will let you know. So Jonathan spoke on David's behalf to his father Saul. He said to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, for he has not sinned against you. On the contrary, his actions have been very beneficial for you. He risked his life when he struck down the Philistine, and the Lord gave all Israel a great victory. When you saw it, you were happy. So why would you sin against innocent blood by putting David to death for no reason? Saul accepted Jonathan's advice and took an oath. As surely as the Lord lives, he will not be put to death. Then Jonathan called David and told him all these things. Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he served him as he had done formerly. Now once again there was war, so David went out to fight the Philistines. He defeated them thoroughly, and they ran away from him. Then an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. He was sitting in his house with his spear in his hand while David was playing the lyre. Saul tried to nail David to the wall with the spear, but he escaped from Saul's presence, and the spear drove into the wall. David escaped quickly that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to guard it and to kill him in the morning. Then David's wife Michael told him, If you do not save yourself tonight, tomorrow you will be dead. So Michael lowered David through the window and he ran away and escaped. Then Michael took a household idol and put it on the bed. She put a quilt made of goat's hair over its head and then covered the idol with a garment. When Saul sent messengers to arrest David, she said, He's sick. Then Saul sent the messengers back to see David, saying, Bring him up to me on his bed so I can kill him. When the messengers came, they found only the idol on the bed and the quilt made of goat's hair at its head. Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me this way by sending my enemy away? Now he has escaped. Michael replied to Saul, he said to me, Help me get away, or else I will kill you. Now David had run away and escaped. He went to Samuel and Ramah and told him everything that Saul had done to him. Then he and Samuel went and stayed at Naoth. It was reported to Saul, saying, David is at Naoth in Ramah. So Saul sent messengers to capture David. When they saw a company of prophets prophesying with Samuel, standing there as their leader, the Spirit of God came upon Saul's messengers, and they also prophesied. When it was reported to Saul, he sent more messengers, but they prophesied too. So Saul sent messengers a third time, but they also prophesied. Finally, Saul himself went to Ramah. When he arrived at the large cistern, that is in Secu, he asked, Where are Samuel and David? They said, At Naoth in Ramah. So Saul went to Naoth and Ramah. The Spirit of God came upon him as well, and he walked along, prophesying, until he came to Naoth and Ramah. He even stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel. He lay there naked all that day and night. For that reason, it is asked, Is Saul also among the prophets? David fled from Naoth in Ramah. He came to Jonathan and asked, What have I done? What is my offense? How have I sinned before your father, for he is seeking my life? Jonathan said to him, By no means are you going to die. My father does nothing large or small without making me aware of it. Why would my father hide this matter from me? It just won't happen. Taking an oath, David again said, Your father is very much aware of the fact that I have found favor with you, and he has thought, Don't let Jonathan know about this, or he will be upset. But as surely as the Lord lives and you live, there is about one step between me and death. Jonathan replied to David, Tell me what I can do for you. 
David said to Jonathan, Tomorrow is the new moon, and I am certainly expected to join the king for a meal. You must send me away so I can hide in the field until the third evening from now. If your father happens to miss me, you should say, David urgently requested me to let him go to his city Bethlehem, for there is an annual sacrifice there for his entire family. If he should then say, that's fine, then your servant is safe. But if he becomes very angry, be assured that he has decided to harm me. You must be loyal to your servant, for you have made a covenant with your servant in the Lord's name. If I am guilty, you yourself kill me. Why bother taking me to your father? Jonathan said, Far be it from you to suggest this. If I were at all aware that my father had decided to harm you, wouldn't I tell you about it? David said to Jonathan, who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? Jonathan said to David, Come on, let's go out to the field. When the two of them had gone into the field, Jonathan said to David, The Lord God of Israel is my witness. I will fill out my father about this time, the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably inclined toward David, will I not then send word to you and let you know? But if my father intends to do you harm, May the Lord do all this and more to Jonathan, if I don't let you know and send word to you so you can go safely on your way. May the Lord be with you, as he was with my father. While I am still alive, extend to me the loyalty of the Lord, or else I will die. Don't ever cut off your loyalty to my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth and called David's enemies to account. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David. Jonathan once again took an oath with David because he loved him. In fact, Jonathan loved him as much as he did his own life. Jonathan said to him, Tomorrow is the new moon and you will be missed, for your seat will be empty. On the third day you should go down quickly and come to the place where you hid yourself the day this all started. Stay near the stone, Ezel. I will shoot three arrows near it as though I were shooting at a target. When I send a boy after them, I will say, Go and find the arrows. If I say to the boy, Look, the arrows are on this side of you, get them. Then come back, for as surely as the Lord lives, you will be safe, and there will be no problem. But if I say to the boy, Look, the arrows are on the other side of you, get away, for in that case the Lord has sent you away. With regard to the matter that you and I discussed, the Lord is the witness between us forever. So David hid in the field. When the new moon came, the king sat down to eat his meal. The king sat down in his usual place by the wall, with Jonathan opposite him and Abner at his side. But David's place was vacant. However, Saul said nothing about it that day, for he thought, Something has happened to make him ceremonially unclean. Yes, he must be unclean. But the next morning, the second day of the new moon, David's place was still vacant. So Saul said to his son Jonathan, Why has Jesse's son not come to the meal yesterday or today? Jonathan replied to Saul, David urgently requested that he be allowed to go to Bethlehem. He said, Permit me to go, for we are having a family sacrifice in the city, and my brother urged me to be there. So now if I have found favor with you, let me go to see my brothers. For that reason, he has not come to the king's table. Saul became angry with Jonathan and said to him, You stupid traitor! Don't I realize that to your own disgrace and to the disgrace of your mother's nakedness, you have chosen this son of Jesse? For as long as this son of Jesse is alive on the earth, you and your kingdom will not be established. Now send some men and bring him to me. For he is as good as dead. Jonathan responded to his father Saul, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Then Saul threw his spear at Jonathan in order to strike him down. So Jonathan was convinced that his father had decided to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table enraged. He did not eat any food on that second day of the new moon, for he was upset that his father had humiliated David. The next morning, Jonathan, along with a young servant, went out to the field to meet David. He said to his servant, Run, find the arrows that I am about to shoot. 
As a servant ran, Jonathan shot the arrow beyond him. When the servant came to the place where Jonathan had shot the arrow, Jonathan called out to the servant, Isn't the arrow further beyond you? Jonathan called out to the servant, Hurry, go faster, don't delay. Jonathan's servant retrieved the arrow and came back to his master. Now the servant did not understand any of this. Only Jonathan and David knew what was going on. Then Jonathan gave his equipment to the servant who was with him. He said to him, Go, take these things back to the city. When the servant had left, David got up from beside the mound, knelt with his face to the ground, and bowed three times. Then they kissed each other, and they both wept, especially David. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for the two of us have sworn together in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord will be between me and you, and between my descendants and your descendants forever. God, I have a friend who is like Saul, and my heart breaks for him. His whole world has been upside down and in turmoil since the first day I met him. Filled with drama, filled with crisis after crisis, filled with anger and frustration, and he has such a short fuse. Amazingly, you've let me see the heart that you gave him. And he is kind and generous and thoughtful and very loving. Yet that's not what his world looks like. And I know that you know the heart that you gave Saul and it was similar. Otherwise, you wouldn't have chosen him to be your king. For your people Israel. But then people start making wrong choices. And bad choices. And selfish choices. And allowing the devil's agenda. To take over their life. So much so. That they can't even see. The disasters. The disasters that they're causing. One after another after another. Saul's life is in such disarray he can't even trust his own children. He, in fact, tries to kill them right in front of him. And I just watched this young man who's been in my life for quite a few years <sighs> sabotage one more thing and then blame it on somebody else, just like Saul is doing. Not taking responsibility for their own actions their own choices more importantly the consequences that come from those God I don't know what's going to happen in this young man's life but I do pray that your will be done in his life and if that's that he needs to suffer more consequences to learn whatever it is that you're teaching him I understand it's just hard to see him in so much self-imposed pain and if your will is for him to learn the lessons quicker and get out of this onto his way of freedom with you, then that would be awesome also. In the meantime, God, allow me to just put you fully in control and, and not try and control the situation, no matter how much it hurts me to watch him make these choices over and over and over again, destroying just one more thing in his life. Just one more thing. You know, it's sort of like we read a couple days ago in, in Acts about people who think that they're not worthy of you. And he just seems to keep proving over and over again how unworthy he is. And I know you don't feel that way about him. I suspect you're even more sad than I am, however, at what he's choosing to do right now. God, just be with him. Guide his steps. Put people in his life who he will listen to, who his heart will listen to, that can get past that ego, can get past that filter of hurt. I know the heart you gave him, and it's absolutely amazing. And I know he's going to be just incredible. 
for your kingdom once he gets past his kingdom. <laughs> but just like it took me years and years to learn my big lesson in life and get on the right track, I sadly suspect he's on that same path. God, just be with him. It's hard to read about Saul and know that my friend is in that same exact turmoil for the exact same reasons. Thank you for watching over him. In your son's name I pray. Amen.